All right, so take out a red pen, switch your midterm review. Virtually, you should have already submitted it on Google Classroom. Uh, make sure you write graded by at the bottom. This is the last section for the midterm review. Um, just to remind you, help class is tomorrow afternoon. I will be here tomorrow during school, so it'll be a normal day. Um, my husband took off the day of work, so I will be here. So that being said, let's look at the terms. Here are the terms. Just go ahead and make sure that they have um, the general gist. It doesn't have to be exactly word for word, um, but they couldn't, you know, write down something random. So collinear, um, they're points that lie on the same line. Coplanar, points on the same plane. Congruent means same length or measure. They cannot just say the word same. Same length or measure. Complementary angles are angles that add up to 90. Supplementary angles are angles that add up to 180. Some people would use the word sum, angles that sum to 90 or sum to 180, S-U-M. That means they add up. An acute angle is less than 90. A right angle is an angle that measures exactly 90. An obtuse angle measures between 90 and 180. A straight angle measures 180. An angle bisector is an array that cuts an angle into two congruent halves. So array that cuts an angle into two congruent halves. Segment bisector is a line, ray, or segment that cuts a segment into two congruent halves. A midpoint is a point that divides a line into two congruent halves. Adjacent angles are angles that share the same vertex and side. Some of y'all would say share a wall, which is fine. I would just make sure it has the word vertex in there. They share a vertex and a side. Parallel lines, the only acceptable answer is that they are coplanar and do not intersect. That's it. Perpendicular lines intersect and form 90 degrees. Then for the last section, list the polygons and their number of sides. I gave you the example of a triangle that has three sides. A quadrilateral has four. A pentagon has five. A hexagon has six. A heptagon has seven. An octagon has eight. A nonagon has nine. A decagon has 10. A hen decagon has 11. A doe decagon has 12. Listing or classifying triangles by their sides. If there are no congruent sides, that's called scalene. A triangle with two congruent sides is called isosceles. A triangle with three congruent sides is equilateral. To classify by angles, the options are acute, right, obtuse, and equiangular. These are two points apiece and five if they skipped a term. If they skipped this section, any part of it at all, it is minus five. If they skipped this section, any part of it at all, it is minus five. If they skipped this section at all, it would also be minus five. You're going to put a grade, um, teacher will pause, and write down um, your scores. We're going to do the same review as yesterday. Um, you've got chapter five notes printed out. Um, so classifying triangles by sides, I'm just going to review part of it, and then we'll pause. You'll do the questions, and then you'll press play again and check your answers. So in this first section, this triangle has no congruent sides, just like we said. This is scalene. Two, it has two congruent sides. That is isosceles. And three congruent sides is equilateral. The second section, classifying triangles by angles. You always look at the largest angle. If the largest angle is less than 90, that means it's an acute triangle. 
If the largest angle is 90, that means it's a right triangle. If the largest angle is greater than 90, it's an obtuse triangle. If all three angles are marked congruent, then that is equiangular triangle. Remember that if it is equilateral, it will also be equiangular because if it has three congruent sides, it will have three congruent angles. If it has two congruent sides, it will have two congruent angles. And if it has no congruent sides, it will have no congruent angles. So remember that in an equiangular triangle, all the angles equal 60 degrees. Because if you take 180, split it between three even angles, that makes 60 degrees. I would remember that for your test, your midterm. It kind of brought it up. On number 58, 50, yep, 58, um, just make sure you know all the angles equal 60 and then all of the sides equal each other. So remember that for your midterm. This bottom section you're going to do in a few minutes. We're going to continue on to the second page, so go ahead and flip. This one's the triangle sum theorem. Um, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180. That just means the three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So you're going to do those two examples in a minute. This one we will work on together. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the interior non-adjacent, oops, sorry, of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So think of it like this, if this angle is 40 and this angle is 60, add them together, that means this angle is 100. Here is why. You know that 180 degrees fits inside of a triangle. You already have 40 and 60, which is 100, which means that this angle, this inside angle would have to be 80. Well, if you look at that, these two are a linear pair. Linear pairs are supplementary. 80 plus 100, it works out. So to find the exterior, you add the interior, the two non-adjacent interior. Remember, adjacent means they share a wall. So non-adjacent interior and number three, okay, this is adjacent to angle one. But these two are not adjacent and they're inside. So these two add up and they'll equal the exterior. So 53 plus 53, which is 106 degrees. So the measure of angle one is 106 degrees. You'll do the second one in a minute. This question is on your midterm review. It's also on your midterm. Um, just to refresh your memory. I'll remind you of part of it. In, in a right triangle, so one of your angles is a right angle, the measure of one acute angle is twice the sum. Remember, the sum is an answer to an addition problem. It's the, what, twice the sum of the measure of the other acute angle, which we always call x. The other acute angle is always x, and 30. Find the measure of each acute angle in the right triangle. So I want you to try this, and then when we go to check it later, you see how you're doing. Go ahead and flip to the next page. This question is similar to number 57 on your midterm review. So again, I want you to try it, and then we'll come back and check it together. On the bottom, this is from 5.4. In this first example, we have an isosceles triangle. Two sides are congruent, which means the angles across from them will be congruent to each other. 
So across from this side is this blank um, angle. Across from this side is x. So that means these two angles will be the same measure. So if the measure of the bottom angle is x, that means the measure of this angle is also x. So I know it looks kind of ugly, but this angle is 130, x and x. Well, what do we know about the three angles in a triangle? They add up to 130. So 130 plus x plus x equals 180. There is a little bit of mental math that you could do, um, but I'm just going to keep doing this. If you know the mental math, then wonderful time. X plus x is 2x. 180 minus 130 is 50. Divide by 2, and that means the measure of x is 25 degrees. We're going to skip to number 4 where we've got um, equilateral and equiangular triangles. Remember, with equilateral triangles, sides equal each other. Um, and that means all their angles are equiangular, which means the angles equal 60. For an isosceles, you've got two congruent sides and two congruent angles. So let's kind of look. You want to decide what you want to find. Um, we can find x first. x is a side, so we want to look at what kind of triangle it's in. Um, all of the angles are congruent in this triangle, which means it's equiangular, which means it's also equilateral, which means all of the sides are the same length. So you could technically label each side equivalent to 5y minus 1 and 5y minus 1. The other side length we're given is this 24, and it is also on an equilateral triangle, which means all of these sides are equal. In the middle, you've got an isosceles, and these two sides are congruent, which means 5y minus 1, which is this side, is equal to 24. Add 1, um, 5y equals 25, so y equals 5. Oops, sorry. No, it's an x. I'm sorry. All that time, and you were probably thinking that I'm writing the wrong letter. I am. That was an x. Lo siento. To find y, y is an angle. So I'm just kind of going to erase this so we can go back to the drawing board with angles. The only other angle other than 6y we've been given are all of these and all of these. So because this is an equiangular, that means all of these angles are 60. You could write it over here if you wanted. 6y is a linear pair with 60. Either way you looked at it, it's a linear pair here. It's a linear pair here, which means you could solve knowing that they add to 180. 60 plus 6y equals 180. Subtract 60. I ran out of room, so 6y equals 180 minus 60 is 120. Divide by 6 and y equals 20. For that section, that's all I'm going to do. You're going to do the two others in a minute. The last page is about triangle congruence. There are five triangle congruence theorems. Side angle side, side side side, hypotenuse leg, angle side angle, and angle angle side. Side angle side is when you have two sides congruent and an angle included between them. So a side congruent to a side an angle to an angle, and a side. Side, side, side says that three sides are congruent to three sides. Hypotenuse leg is only works for a right triangle. Um, the hypotenuse across from the right angle is marked congruent to hypotenuse, and then a corresponding leg is congruent on both triangles. 
Angle side angle is where you have two angles marked congruent and a side between them marked congruent. And angle angle side is when you have two angles marked congruent and a non-included side marked congruent. Okay. Notice how AAA is not an option and that we also do not spell bad words in geometry class. So what you're going to do is you're going to go through the rest of this, answer the questions. Your teacher's going to pause here so that we can check ourselves at the end. So you're ready to go over the answers. This first one, you've got, you've got no congruent sides, which means it is scalene. Um, and then you look at the largest angle, which is Q, and it is obtuse. So it's scalene, obtuse, or obtuse scalene. That is the same thing. This next one, um, you would probably have to take the corner of your paper to check. This is actually a right angle. Normally, you'd have a box. You know that. I know that. We talk about it all the time. Should have a box. Um, you'd either you need to use a protractor or the corner of your paper. This one is right. And since none of the sides are congruent, it is still scalene. And then last, um, you've got two congruent sides, which is isosceles. And um, if you look at the biggest angle, which would be these two, they're acute. So isosceles acute triangle. These next two triangles, um, it says find the measure of angle A. You should get 20 degrees. Make sure you have work to show what you did. Number two, this next one, the measure of angle A is equal to 45 degrees. In the exterior angle section, the exterior angle should be 155 degrees. In the right triangle, you've got a right triangle. One of the angles is described as twice the sum. This looks like this, because you want to add first and then double it. Twice the sum of the other angle. We don't know. We always call it x. And 30, we always call the other acute angle x. So you need to have 2 times x plus 30 plus x plus 90 equals 180. You'll get x equals 10 which means the other is 2 times the sum of 10 and 30. Well, the sum of 10 and 30 is 40. 2 times 40 is 80. The next page, in number 2, we've got two congruent angles, which means we have two congruent sides. The congruent sides will be across from the congruent angles. So, they're congruent. You'll get x equals 6. On the second triangle, um, you've got two congruent sides, which means you have two congruent angles. These angles will be across from the sides, so these angles are congruent. These angles, so I'll try to highlight them in green, are marked congruent. So that's 72 as well. But in this triangle, you've got two congruent sides, which means you have two congruent angles. So. That means the bottom two are 72, so 72 plus 72 plus x equals 180, which means x is 36. Decide which theorem, if any, proves the triangles are congruent. So we're comparing this triangle to the other. We've got a side marked congruent with side a side congruent with side, and then they share a side. So these are congruent, and it's because of side, side, side. Number two, comparing this triangle to the other, we've got an angle marked congruent to an angle, an angle to an angle, and a side to a side. So you need to make sure you know if it's angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Ask yourself where the side is located. If it's located between the two angles, then it's angle, side, angle. If it is not between the two angles, it is angle, angle, side. And in this case, it is angle, angle, side. If it were angle, side, angle, the side would have to be right here. But it is not. 
Then number three, this one is congruent by two different reasons. Compare your triangles. You've got a side, march congruent to a side, an angle, congruent to an angle, a side to a side. So definitely side, angle, side. But also, you've got these vertical angles. So you technically also have angle, side, angle. So both answers. And then the last three, compare our triangles. We've got a side congruent to a side, a side to a side, and then we've got an angle, vertical angles. Um, so you need to ask, is this side angle side? Is the angle between the two sides? No, it is not. It would have to be here, and it is not. Um, otherwise, it just spells, you know, donkey, and we don't do that. So not congruent, not enough information, not possible, however you want to say that. Number five is a right triangle, so you want to ask yourself, is this hypotenuse leg? Is the hypotenuse marked congruent to the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is across from the right angle, so they are marked congruent. Is a leg marked congruent to a leg? Yes, this is hypotenuse leg. And then last, we've got an angle congruent to an angle, a side to a side, an angle to an angle. So we definitely have angle side angle, but also we have a side congruent to a side, an angle to an angle, oops, wrong way, to an angle, and then a side to a side. So technically we also have side angle side.